Hey you guys, so today we are working on refreshing things around the house, starting with our guest bedroom. So I have two big things that I want to do in here. One, we got a new mattress finally because this mattress has been in our family, I don't know, like 15 plus years and it feels like it. I think it's been honestly maybe like 20 years, but it's been around a while and the one that we got i am so beyond excited for i'm sure i'll be sleeping a few nights in here with it but we want to change out the mattress and then also i want to add a little more function into this room right now we just have this old stool right here that i thought would be really nice because people could set their luggage on but i've asked our guests when they come to stay they're like you know what a dresser would be a lot more useful originally that was actually in the plans but the one that i got was a little bit too wide so i just found one on facebook marketplace literally yesterday but i have to give it a little bit of tlc so we're gonna do that today and add that into here and then i'm actually gonna hop outside and just kind of refresh the backyard a little bit because that definitely needs a little love so we have a lot to get done i honestly doubt we're gonna get it all done today it'll probably be like a two-day thing but it's gonna feel so much better once it's done so let's do this This is the before of this room and we're not going to be changing a ton about the styling of the room but we're going to be adding a lot of functionality and just kind of make it feel a little more upgraded because of the mattress and the new dresser but there is a lot that I still want to get done to this room. First I want to get doors put on. You guys know we have been struggling to get a door put on this bedroom and a lot of that has just been figuring out exactly what we want to do. Do we want to kind of like frame it in and make it be like more of a traditional French door? Do we want to do sliding doors? I don't know. I really want to keep the bright light that comes into this room extending into the hallway just because the entryway can be a little bit darker, especially with our dark floors. So that's something that we're just kind of always playing around with thoughts in our mind. But I know that this is going to be the year that we get it done. I'm always welcoming any ideas, but that is definitely something that I want to tackle this year and then I'm also kind of toying with the idea of doing something on the back wall I don't know if that's going to be like beadboard or board and batten or maybe some really pretty box molding I'm not entirely sure but I just think I want to do something to give this room a little bit more personality than it has right now so first things first we needed to strip the bed of all of the bedding and then go ahead and remove our very old and used mattress and we are going to replace it with a lull mattress several months ago i kind of told you guys we were in the market for a new mattress and i looked into a ton of them and lull was definitely one of the most recommended and one that i found really good reviews on so i am so excited to be teaming up with lull in today's video we ended up getting the lull lux hybrid mattress this one is awesome because it actually has coils inside of it and it has six different layers to add comfort to add support i would say it leans more on the firm side but i love that just because i feel like that gives Gives you a lot of good support which especially as you get older I feel like that's so needed but our lull mattress arrived really soon after ordering it right to our doorstep and then setting it up was super easy and took basically no time at all we just unwrapped it and watch it expand almost instantly and I actually have had some sleepovers in this room ever since getting the new mattress and I love it I feel like it's so comfy but lull is giving you guys 35% off so I will have a link down below for you to check it out and another thing that I think is so cool is they actually offer a 300 165 night trial so if you order one of their mattresses and you don't end up loving it you can return it within that 365 days they have no hassle returns and they offer free shipping so they make it really risk-free but like i said i will have the information for that down below in the description box
Next, I just went into my laundry room to go ahead and wash up our bedding so that once the mattress had completely expanded, I would be ready with some clean bedding. And then this right here is the area that we're going to be putting the dresser in. So it's not a super tiny area, but it's also not oversized or anything. So I wanted to find a really specific size dresser. And this one came up literally the morning before and it was just perfect. I love that this dresser is very simple, but also I just think it has a really cool vibe and a cool look to it. It doesn't have any drawer pulls or anything so it's all just like very subtle but it does have some cool woodworking on the side and then because the handles are kind of indented I thought that added some interest but as you can see when I show you these up close shots this dresser is not in the best condition. The drawers pull out beautifully, like that all works great, but the look of it on the outside, the cosmetic side of it, that part is where it needs a little love. And that's why I got such a great deal on it, which is perfect because I didn't want to spend a lot of money on a guest room dresser. So this is the dresser that I found on Facebook Marketplace. I'll have to wipe that up and clean it off. So I'm gonna start cleaning it up and sanding it off, I guess, and then we'll kind of play it by ear. But I just think it's such a pretty dresser, so it definitely is not gonna be worse than how it is now. So originally I was gonna sand the drawers and all the crevices, but I think I'm just gonna sand the body down to raw wood. I'll start with a 60 grit just to get like the finish and all that off and then I'll smooth it out with a 220 grit. And then we're gonna paint the drawer fronts a color. <laughs> and I'm not a thousand percent sure yet what color I want to do, but I'm just gonna pull from my stash because you guys know I have a lot of paint <laughs> in my stash. I'm actually kind of leaning towards like the same color that we used up in Luke and Noah's bathroom, which is that really pretty rosemary color. It's I believe by Sherwin-Williams. That I think is going to tie really nicely in the room. It'll bring that color downstairs. It'll coordinate really well with the evergreen fog that we have. It'll kind of bring a lot of depth into the room. So I think that's our plan, but we'll kind of play it by ear. I'm also gonna number the drawers just in case they're specific to like what order they go in. That way I just don't mess it up. Almost immediately when I started sanding this, I don't know exactly what it was, but it was something like the way it started sanding that it really actually scared me. It made me feel like, oh my gosh, this is actually particle board, which I checked on the inside and like you can tell it's wood, but I was second guessing myself. So that's why I was randomly sanding all over the dresser in different spots, just kind of checking it all out. But thankfully I was not originally wrong and it is full hardwood all the way around the dresser. So it did take me literally two or two and a half hours to sand all of this, including the sides, which I actually haven't sanded yet. I'll get to that in just a minute, but sanding is like one of those things that I always think I like, but if I have a big project like this after the first 30 minutes, I'm like, okay, I'm done. I think I've sanded enough. And then I always start second guessing my decision. Like, did I really like the raw wood look? Should I have just painted this? but I usually will just stick with my original thought on it. And I usually always will be happy with my decision to go ahead and sand everything just because I really do love the look of raw wood. Now you'll see how it actually turns out in the end and kind of what I think about it. But I do think the raw wood is so cool, especially because as you saw in the beginning, it was just that really orangey kind of outdated wood. And so this definitely brought it up to more modern day and kind of what's more in style nowadays. And I love how when you sand something, it's something that really doesn't take a lot of money. Literally Literally, you just need a sander and sandpaper and then you're just good to go. You can go to town and really change up the entire look of the piece. So 
So once I got the full base coat sanded, it looks really, really good. But if you run your hands over it, you can feel how rough and unfinished that is. So then I just went over all of the surfaces with the 220 grit sandpaper. When you run your hand over it after you've sanded it with the 220 grit, it's going to feel so buttery soft. And that's how you know you're ready to kind of do whatever else you want to do with it. So at this point, you could leave it raw wood, you could stain it. I'm definitely gonna put a poly coat on it just to help protect the wood itself, but you can just see how beautiful this is looking. Also, I just have to say, I love how quick and painless this looks. It wasn't a hard thing to do, but it's just tiring after you've been sanding for like two hours. If you want to do a project like this, you absolutely are capable of doing it, but just know it's never gonna look quite as easy as it does here on YouTube because I can speed up the footage and make it really motivating and quick when in reality it did take me several hours to achieve this look. Alright, so it is a new day. I'm going to focus on getting everything else done today, but we have a busy day, so I'm gonna try to kind of like stay on track and just not take a ton of time. The color I'm gonna use, it's called Sherwin-Williams Rosemary. It's actually the same color that we used in Luke and Noah's bathroom. That's what we're gonna do, but I am gonna be doing it inside today because it is too cold outside. It's like 41 or something. Here in Arizona, that is pretty chilly, so the can says it needs to be put on between 50 and 90 degrees. So we're pretty close, but I'm just gonna play it safe and we will paint inside. But I'm probably still gonna do the poly coat on the raw wood part of the dresser outside. Probably take our chances with that one, but I'm gonna go ahead and start bringing things in, getting ready and painting. So this color is kind of interesting. It looks pretty light when you put it on and then it darkens as it goes. But I also feel like when it's in a bright space, it almost changes like the hue of it. And I kind of forgot, but I was a little unsure of it whenever we painted the boys' bathroom. And then once it was complete and it dried really good, I love the color. I think it's so pretty. And this one actually is on the same paint swatch as the color that we have on our kitchen island. It's also the same one that we have on our built-ins in our living room and the accent wall in both Kyle's and my office. So I love that since it is kind of in that same area, it's going to have a lot of the same undertones and just feel complimentary while not feeling like just a straight up repeat. So that was one of the reasons that I chose this color. And also obviously that I just had it on hand and I didn't have to go buy anything special for this simple little project. You and me are moving, make sure we get through this. Let's just keep on dancing as one. All right, I have, I believe, three coats of paint on these. I honestly think I only needed two because it had really good coverage, but I just wanna make sure it's extra durable. So I went ahead and popped 
a third coat on there. I have my sweatshirt on now because we're gonna head outside while these finish drying. I'm gonna be really careful because I am freezing, but this is like one of my favorite sweatshirts. I don't wanna ruin it, but it's too cold for me outside. So let's go ahead and get the poly on. Whenever you use poly, just know that there are multiple kinds. I grew up always using the oil-based poly. I don't know if water-based poly is more of a newer thing, but the oil-based poly, I will say, is a little bit more durable. However, it tends to yellow over time. And if you've ever seen a piece of, you know, old furniture or something that was refinished and you see like that yellow gloop or yellow kind of tone on it, I bet you that is going to be an oil-based poly item. And another thing about oil-based is it is a little bit trickier to work with. I feel like it's a little bit less forgiving. So I will always opt for the water-based because it's going to dry fully clear and it's not going to yellow over time, which is the best. just have to wipe this down with a wet rag just to get anything off. Once I did the poly coat, I just went through really quick with a 220 gray sandpaper and just did a light, very light sanding on the top or on the whole surface. And basically that's just gonna give you like that perfectly smooth finish because sometimes you can have just like a slight texture after adding a poly coat. So now it's super smooth and it's looking really, really, really pretty. you guys will have to give me your honest opinion about this. I was feeling pretty confident about it and then once I put it all together I was just like I'm not really sure about it. Kyle said he loves it. The boys say they love it and I feel like I like the elements of it but when I put it together and I put it in this room I'm just not really sure about it. I think the biggest thing that's throwing me off is it does actually look like it has a little bit of a yellow tone especially compared to like the blonde wood of the bed frame and so I'm thinking that I actually might want to go back in and whitewash the base and maybe that will shift it but I don't know you guys let me know your thoughts on it I totally didn't film this part, but as soon as I got this room all set up, I literally just collapsed onto the bed and it felt so good. It's like the perfect mix of being a firm bed that gives you a lot of support, but it also doesn't feel hard. Like it feels very soft, if that makes sense. I'm really excited. I actually have one of my best, best friends from kindergarten coming to stay with us this coming week. And I cannot wait for her to be able to sleep in this bed and enjoy it. I'm just really excited. And I hope that this room will be a little bit more functional and a little bit more enjoyable to stay in now that we've made these few little changes. Also, I just wanted to get your opinion on this. So I thought that I had a different color paint. I thought I had kind of like a dusty terracotta type of color. And I actually had thought originally that that would be really nice in this dresser as the front drawers, but I didn't end up having it in my stash or at least I couldn't find it. So let me know what you think. Do you like the green color or do you think that like a terracotta color would look even better in this room? I don't know. I'm a little torn on it. So I would love to hear your thoughts.
Welcome to our backyard where we live back here and <laughs> cleaning is not an immediate thought when we come back here. Like we just kind of hang out a lot more than anything. And as you can see, there is a lot of work that needs done back here. Like there are different things kind of left across the yard. We even have random stuff in the rocks in the side of the yard. Some things were ours and some things, honestly, I don't really even know how they got there. I don't know if like the wind picked them up and they landed in our yard, but we are going to take care of all of it. So first I went through and just kind of tidied up the yard area. And then I went ahead and focused on kind of more of the patio side of things. And once I was done, it just felt so much more peaceful back here because for a while it's felt like <laughs> a bit of an eyesore and also just a place that you don't as much want to hang out because you can just see all the work that needs to be done. So working on the patio, I kind of started in layers. My first layer was literally just tidying things up. So I took everything off the surfaces that didn't belong there. I threw away any garbage or trash, and I even had to get rid of my little plant that did not survive the hot, hot summer here. I think we had like a record high summer. I don't know how it was for everyone else. I think a lot of people had colder summers than normal and half of us had a lot hotter and we were in the hotter half so it literally didn't monsoon the entire summer which is so abnormal for here we usually have like a whole monsoon season and then the temperatures were just so insanely hot so I think that's what kind of did my plant in I also needed to take care of some of our dog beds that one of our cats has had an issue with peeing on I know it's disgusting but that's real life so I'm going to take them out front and later on I just went through and actually tried to power wash them and clean them up that way and then the last thing that I wanted to do in my tidying up layer was to move our griddle over from this area that it literally never gets used to behind our grill where it actually belongs and hopefully we can get some use out of it here. All right, it's actually been a few hours because I had to run out really quick and run some errands but I'm back, I'm gonna go ahead and not pressure wash right here just because that's gonna be like a whole big thing and I'll grab Kyle's help to like move all the furniture off. We'll do that probably a little bit deeper into spring. I am going to use the leaf blower just to blow off like any leaves, dirt, whatever, kind of out into the grass area. And then we are going to <laughs> wipe this down. It is so crazy like how dusty stuff gets not only outside like obviously but even on the inside of the house i feel like it's just so dusty and ridiculous here but we're gonna get this spruced up and looking so much better but already it just looks like way nicer because it was kind of getting rough my whole life's just a million different types of maybe Sometimes I'm going crazy. I look at the clouds and think that's the life, ain't it? Yeah. And they look at us and think, man, it seems like they really hate it. Ooh, yeah, ain't it fun when you don't got no answers? I swear all my friends act like they live in Vegas. Ooh. Okay, so this was my first time leaf blowing our yard and just kind of blowing all the leaves away, but honestly, I wish I had this as a kid because I remember spending so much time raking up all the leaves, and I know we don't have the same amount of leaves or anything here in Arizona, but this was like worlds faster than it was just having to hand rake everything, so... 
I'm definitely feeling like I missed out on this amazing invention when I was younger. But anyway, once I got the yard kind of tidied up and leaf blown, I actually went back into the patio area and started wiping off the surfaces. And one thing I've noticed, especially when cleaning off really dusty areas like this, especially when you're outside and everything is literally just covered in dust and dirt and all the things, is to use a two rag system. So I'm just spraying everything down with my multi-surface spray and then I'm wiping everything off. And and then I go back in with a second rag and I do the exact same thing. And the reason that I've learned that this helps is because the first time you wipe it down with a rag, it looks really good until it dries like minutes later. And then you just kind of have like a bunch of dust and dirt smears around all of your surfaces. And so doing this ensures that it's going to dry really nice and actually look clean once you're done. So the next time you clean up the outside area of your home, especially if it's dusty and dirty like this was, try out the two rag system. It really works amazing. Amazing. You guys, look at that before and after. I literally didn't bring anything extra into this space, but this just goes to show. Put some love back into your space. Give it a little bit of time and TLC. You can really enhance your home. You can make it feel so much more inviting, so much more cozy, and just a place that you really want to spend your time, which is exactly how our home should feel. I hope that you are leaving this video today feeling motivated and inspired to do the same kind of things in your home. And if you are wanting some extra company because you're still working on some things or you need a little bit more inspiration, I'm going to link one of my homemaking videos right here. This video is so good. I'm sharing several new recipes, some ideas for decorating your home with things that you already have, and also, of course, some cleaning motivation. So definitely check that one out next, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys!